What's up guys, so today we're going to go through uh, synthesizing some stabs using Native Instruments Massive. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through kind of just, well, making it and then we'll probably bounce them out, do some variations and kind of resample it and stuff. Um, cool, so our first thing I want to do is obviously set up our master chain, which is kind of the first, the go-to really, usually. Um, so I've kind of got a preset set up, um, and if you're watching any of the other videos, it'll be kind of the same, same thing I'm using for most of them, so let's call this Massive. Pa stab patch or something um so yeah we don't only look ahead chopping off our transient um we want uh the attack phase to be really slow allowing it all to be i think pro l uses two different stages of limiting and this allows it to use the second quicker one or something like that and yeah release as quick as possible for ultimate loudness um cool so we've got battery there so let's get massive up oops Okay, so the uh, general principle for this patch is that I'm going to make a very um, harmonically rich source um, and then we're going to filter through really quickly and the the more harmonics and the, the richer the sound is to begin with the more pronounced the filter is going to be and you'll see what I mean by that so let's quickly set up a little loop uh, let's go 140 or something and uh, Cool. So let's just quickly write something in. So, is that 140? That's 300. Yeah. Let's try it again. Okay. So, Something amazing. Do 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 do. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Cool, let's go to the right octave. Okay, so let's just... Obviously not sounding very good, but it'll do for now. Okay, so yes, let's get up our, our span so we can have a look at what's going on here. So at the moment we've got a saw wave, which has got... Um, it's fairly harmonically rich, but... It's quite a simple waveform and we want to kind of chunk it up a little bit. So I'm going to go into the wavetable on Massive um, and use Crusher. She's got these kind of nice thick tops. As you can see, more harmonically rich than maybe a saw wave. Oops, let me take that loop off by accident. Um, but as you can see, the low end kind of loses out a little bit. So, so we're going to bolster that up with the saw. So we've got two, uh, oct uh, two oscillators going at the same time. So the saw is going to fill out the bottom region. Um, but yeah, we want to create more harmonics. So an easy way to do that is, um, there's a few ways you could chorus it. Um, to get more variation in the pitch of them but um for now we're gonna distort using a sine shaper which is a quite an aggressive way to distort sounds and some of the more metallic uh wa sounding wavetables and massive can really get thickened up by using the sine shaper so this region is really getting quite thick now um obviously it still sounds pretty pants we haven't done anything to it yet but we're just going to create a rich source to begin with and then we'll worry about other stuff afterwards um, now to create even more harmonics, we're going to in utilize another technique. Um, it's kind of Massive's um, way of doing FM stuff. So we're going to have uh, this modulation oscillator <clears throat> phase, um, well, modulate the frequency of this oscillator one, which is ch chosen here, um, with 
a version of itself that's like two octaves up. So the result is that if we just take this off, you'll see more harmonics be created the further I push this up. So really thick top end now. Uh, but again, we need that lows brought about by the saw wave. You're kind of just trying to find a point at which you're not losing too much of your low end. That doesn't sound very thick, you know, um, so it's bring down. Okay, so we're going to do, um, do some thickening now in the unison. So we're going to create five versions of the same patch now. Um, and then using this pitch cut off um, slider, we're going to have it deviate. So this is uh, all the way over here is um, an entire semitone. So it's going to sound awful in that tune. So then you kind of find the right point that gives it, you can still discern what pitch it is clearly, but it's kind of got that thick sound to it. Um, so let's also pan some of the different versions as well. Again, it sounds pretty wank, but um, we are going to, you know, filter it and stuff. So, um, yeah, okay, let's get onto that. Let's do some low-pass stuff. Right, okay, so at the moment we've got our sign shaper happening after the filter, um, which, when we add some resonance, is going to sound pretty awful. <laughs> Um, so what we want to do is create this rich source first using the distortion and then filter it afterwards. So see so what that sounds like. Yeah, so we actually had it an octave too high because I'm stupid. Cool, uh, we're going to add then some white noise as well to thicken it up a little bit further. And then get some width on it, um, well more width, using Dimension Expander. Kind of creates a very close room um, and then lets you feed that in. Okay. Okay, so that's a basic patch. Um, <clears throat> now there's a couple of things we can do to it. Um, usually when creating transient sounds, anything percussion or uh, stabby, I I use a pitch envelope to, um, like if you've seen any of my drum tutorials, you'll you'll see that I usually use sine waves and pitch them down really quickly. It creates a, um, a kind of knocking sound right at the start of the sound. So if we, um, we're basically applying this shape to the pitch of all the oscillators, and it's important to do all of them so that they um, stay aligned. Um, certainly with the pitch one, the sorry, the, the phase and oscillator one certainly need to be pitched the same. So you can hear it starting with a really high pitch and moving down. Um, and then, yeah, another little trick we can do. So we've got uh, our main filter envelope on two, envelope two here. Um, uh, we're going to use three to just right at the start of the sound. We're going to have it um, open up a little bit more. So it's kind of, imagine here we're adding another envelope up here. So we've got a very sharp bit and then it comes down a bit slower. Um, so on three, we're going to have just a very short decaying. So let's just see that with and without. So that's without. Um, so you still got that kind of low, low passy movement in the mids, but you haven't got much tops. This one allows your the attack, the transient, to have a little more top end to it. But it doesn't affect the um, the kind of mid movement that we're getting from this one. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. 
Cool, then on the macros we're going to have um, some control just for fault formation's sake. So on the, I thought, that's the, is that the wrong envelope? It is indeed, right, cool, so I'm going to take that off. Um, let's apply it again, cool. So on envelope 2 we're going to have macro 1 control the decay. And as well as that, um, I feel like when the decay is shorter, it, the low pass wants to be a bit lower. So on three, we're going to have one control the level as well. So it's not going to go quite as high. It's going to have a little pitch glide on it. Uh, so we're going to put it on to make sure it's on mono. Um, and then have the time sliding between notes, the portmento. Okay. So it's kind of like a lecture, and you can do, uh, if you want that really lecture sound, you could have like, uh, they often put fifths in. It's probably not the best uh, oscillator to do that on. Anyway, that's a different, that's a different sound. Okay, so um, that's kind of the simple patch there. Um, as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on, but um, it's pretty effective. So that's kind of your base layer. Um, and then from there, I used to, I like to uh, kind of thicken it up by creating various versions of the sound. So I'm going to create some sends here. I have like some close room v reverbs and distortions and maybe a vocode uh, white noise layer. I think on uh, in Ableton there's, I think it's called Erosion or something, which is a very good white noise generating kind of vocode thing. But it's great for this. It kind of sounds like a bit of a room being added to it, but it's, um, yeah, just like a vocoded white noise layer. See how much that thickens it up. I'm going to cut off the lows there. Uh, so let's see before. Make sure we're muting these. And then, um, as we said, we've got those macros ready to go. So uh, let's kind of play about here a little bit. Hmm, sounds kind of badass. Let's uh, maybe bring the volume down here. I've actually got an EQ or anything going on here yet. So let's get a Pro L on there. Um, take the look ahead off. Yeah, the, thick, the low end sounds a lot thicker now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you've got to be kind of takes quite a lot of tweaking to get the uh, the relationship between the sign shaper and these two oscillators correct, so that you maintain all that low end you want. Now, when placing this in a mix, I would um, I create another version of it, um, like so, and have it. I take off all the uh, the mad stuff. Um, so let's have a. Sign shaper, take the noise off and the modulation. So we just got this uh, soul wave going through a low pass now. Um, take off the unison and then just isolate this low end and then um, do a crossfade on them both. So, sweet. So I'll show you what I mean by that. This is just to maintain the consistency down there. So, 150 hertz. Um, we've got a kind of low pass. And then on the other version, we'd. Uh, paste the other, the same one, and just turn it into a high, a low cut, so that basically this one's doing all the tops, and this one's doing all the lows now, and you've, you've got a trustworthy low end now that you can, you can know it's not going to be affected by all the crazy modulation we did. OK, 
Okay, so that's a few of the layers. Um, let's add a close room. Um, I use Cubase's Reverence for this one. It's a really short tail. Make sure you're using the <clears throat> hundred, uh, mix on 100% so you're just having the full wet reverb signal. And then usually I cut most of the lows out. Oops. Uh, because reverb lows tend to be a bit wishy washy. Um. And then uh, FX3, kind of like a crazy chorus version. <clears throat> I love this free plugin, it's fantastic. Um, let's see what that sounds like. Kind of crazy, cool. So let's again cut out the wishy washy lows and bring it down. Unfortunately, this plugin introduces this weird. Um, it, when you open up, sometimes it peaks the volume and it takes ages to come back down, but yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, bringing the resonance down there makes it sound a little, ah, made it sound a little more beefy. Um, so, I'm just going to make a few more variations so we can bounce it out and then start doing some more resampling to it. So I'm just going to copy that over to both channels there. Cool. So yeah, let's get a bounce of that. Um, so stabs. Or base gorilla. Um, okay, that'll do. So then I'm going to use my resampling tool, which is uh, going to be contact. Um, although all the things I'll be showing you will be uh, applicable to any of the other samplers you'll be using. Uh, the one in Ableton does a lot of similar stuff. Although I do recommend contact. It is pretty darn good. I apologize if this takes a minute. So basically yeah, what we're going to be doing in this resampling process is um, <clears throat> isolating individual notes and apply more pitch modulations to them using that pitch envelope to uh, tighten up the transient on the start of it and then probably layer it with uh, some trash uh, versions of itself as well to get some more crunchy bits um, but yeah this is kind of a simple run through about how I go about some of the stabs but there's loads of ways you can approach it um, and frankly I haven't used Massive in a while I'm sure Serum can do some pretty snazzy stuff, I'm sure it does all the same stuff as uh, Massive does now anyway Come on. It's unbelievable.
Come on. Finally, okay. So, <laughs> it's gonna take him longer, is it? There you go. Okay, so if we grab a region over here, okay. So yeah, my first go-to is usually by default the release is up, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so we'll take that off. Uh, yeah, so I guess now about, it's about selecting uh, part of the, the bounce that we like. Ideally, we want something quite long, so maybe this one here. Oops. Maybe yeah, that next one. Do do do. Okay. Right now, it's important to get the uh, the transient quite accurate on this, so we're gonna zoom in really far into the waveform. Make sure it's all aligned. Okay. And then yeah, the end doesn't want to be. Clipping as well. Clicking, sorry. Okay, cool. So now we've got that. Um, let's get a little loop going. What note is that? So that's a D sharp. So, okay. So we're going to apply an envelope to the pitch. In fact, I'll create a couple here. Um, so this is the same envelope being applied three times over, 12 semitones at a time. So. <clears throat> If I press down, this shape here is going to be applied to the pitch. Um, so it'll be 12 times 3 is 36. So there'll be 36 semitones up here and uh, none here. So this is time going on here. So you can hear that starting really high pitched and kind of pitching down. Mm, that's starting to sound really cool. Oh, that sounds really cool. It's this low C. Okay, that's a bit too much. Uh, just gonna make a bounce of that. <clears throat> okay, now we can start playing about with uh, some layering. So let's just create some channels. Did that click just there? No. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm gonna get trash up and see what we can do. So as we've been through before, there's um the frequency content of the uh, signal going into trash is really a deciding factor on how it sounds. So if we accentuate the bass, for instance, um, cut out some of the mids. Uh, we'll have a very different sound. Uh, I'm going to use a different trash setting. Um, so we're going to go and distort. Let's try electric trash. Kind of sounds like a sign shape, actually. Ooh. That end bit's pretty cool, isn't it? Just gonna steal that. Stealing that. It's not really quite what we're looking for though, so we're looking for that kind of crunchy top end. Again, that's kind of sign shapey sounding. Alright, so in order to isolate what we're listening to, um, we're looking for that kind of crunchy top end stuff, so I'm just going to low cut the rest of it so our ears can concentrate on that. Let's 
Let's try a different group here. Uh, let's try crispy. That's always a go-to of mine. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, inbuilt Cubase plugin called Quadrafuzz, um, which if you use the decimating sec uh, setting on this top band, you get this really cool kind of um, rippiness, which I'm really into. So I'm just going to bounce that up. Um, and then we're going to change the envelope of this. So um, the transient, we kind of don't want to, we don't want to um, have too many things happening at the same time there. So we're probably going to fade that in. And we need the envelopes to kind of match up with each other. So um, if I go onto this fade out here, I've got like a flat setting. Um, can I remove some of that? And then I'm going to frequency shift it down. Sick. Um, let's create another copy of that. Use that faux code trick again. In fact, let's uh, let's get a very chorus version. Uh, I think there's another free one down here. So yeah, we're going to remove those kind of uh, lows. Um, heavily chorus low end generally gets pretty flaky. So that's just the original. And now this is uh, with the extra layers. So let's... Uh, Massive stab three. <clears throat> okay, uh, now we're going to go on to back into contact and import it back in, see if we can play about with it even more. Hey, nice and quick this time. When you're ready. Ah, uh, more waiting. Really? That's great. There we go. Could even do the envelope again. Um, but yeah, maybe not. Let's go on to, let's get rid of that. So we've gone to the tone generator and find its pitch. So it was, a, I believe it was a low C. So that'd be like minus 34, maybe. Sounds pretty awesome to be honest. Um, let's maybe play it a bit higher though. Try a little riff out. Oops. Thank you. 
And there you have it. Um, resampling some massive stabs. So let's listen to what we've got now. Uh, and what we started off with was something like... Sweet. Cool. I hope you guys uh, picked up some little tricks there. That was uh, a lot of fun. Right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.